Uh, in this video we shall see the MOSFET as an active load. Okay, first we shall see what is the need of active loads. So we'll have a look at uh, how to increase the voltage gain of a CS amplifier. So we know that this is a CS amplifier. Of course, in this CS amplifier, the biasing is not uh, shown over here. So we'll assume that the bias is, biasing is existing and the output is taken at the drain. The input is applied at the gate. Now we know that the uh, expression for the gain, which is magnitude, is given by Gm into Rd. Uh, as we know that uh, it is the product of Gm and Rd. Uh, there are two ways of increasing the gain of the amplifier. One way is uh, you increase the value of uh, Gm or uh, increase the value of Rd. Now, how do we increase the value of uh, Gm? So, Gm, can, Gm is given by this expression, so under root of 2 Id mu and Cox into W by L. So, that is uh, we can increase the Gm value by increasing the Id uh, current. So, Id will be increased to increase the value of Gm. So now uh, we'll observe what happens if I increase the value of Gm or the Rd value. So when Gm or the Rd is increased to increase the uh, voltage gain, in either the cases Id into Rd will increase because the increase of Gm will increase uh, will be effect only when you increase the value of Id. When you increase the value of Rd, this Rd will increase. So in either case, uh, this Id into Rd drop will increase. So this will actually reduce the output swing. So let us try to see okay, how does this will want to reduce the output swing. Now we know that uh, the output is always swinging from rear to VDD which is centered at uh, the drain voltage VD. Now you can see as we increase the value of uh, RD or the value of ID to increase the gain. So this drop increases. When this drop increases the available swing from this VD till this point so we will going to keep on reducing. So of course we are supposed to dedicate uh, the voltage which is the overdrive voltage for this MOSFET to remain in saturation. So this uh, swing whatever we have so is keep on reducing. So therefore Gm or the value of Rd increase will actually reduce the output swing. Then what is the solution? The solution is we have to go for active loads. So let us see what is this active loads means. So active load is one so it should uh, give high resistance value but uh, it should also allow a greater swing. So we are supposed to get a larger resistance but it should not uh, consume too much of uh, uh, drop over there. So it should allow greater output swing. That is active load, active devices will be used as load. So we will, uh, active devices like MOSFET will be used as load. Now we shall consider uh, this particular <coughs> MOSFET uh, diagram. So this dotted indicates that so there is a circuitry behind this. So there is some circuitry which is uh, left out here. So we are considering only this MOSFET and trying to analyze what is the resistance seen from the source side. Suppose if this uh, MOSFET is connected as load. Whenever MOSFET is connected as load, so gate will be applied with a, a bias voltage V bias. So it will not be applied. Uh, there is no uh, small signal applied here. Whenever we use uh, MOSFET as a load, we'll be using it as uh, the gate will be always uh, the DC voltage. And assume that okay, this is the uh, MOSFET which is used as load. So let us try to find out okay what is the resistance that is seen from uh, the source end. For that, okay, let me write the AC uh, small signal analysis. So as we can see now, uh, there are two uh, DC voltages, one at the gate and one at the train. You can see the gate is uh, grounded, the drain is grounded, and the remaining uh, the MOSFET is replaced by its uh, uh, constant current source uh, equivalent circuit. Since lambda is zero, the R naught is represented by open circuit. Now, in order to find the uh, impedance over here, so we are connecting a dummy source of magnitude Vx, and uh, the ratio of Vx by Ix will going to give what is the resistance seen from the source side. So from this uh, small signal analysis, we know that Ix, the current that is flowing over here, is exactly opposite to the current that is uh, coming down here. So this Ix is equal to minus Gm into Vgs. So but we can see now, this Vgs which is the gate to source uh, small signal voltage is exactly minus of Vx. 
Now we know that uh, it ju just have a look at uh, this plus of Vgs. The plus of Vgs is nothing but uh, ground, which is the ground of this uh, minus of Vx. And you can see the plus of Vx is minus of uh, Vgs. So that way we can write Vgs is equal to minus of Vx. So substituting this Vgs as minus Vx, we get the expression for Ix as Gm into Vx. So from which uh, we can write what is Vx by Ix is nothing but 1 over Gm. I can see uh, Gm is actually uh, uh, ohm inverse. So 1 over Gm happens to be the resistance. So if you look from the source side for a MOSFET with a gate uh, at a bias, DC bias. So with this uh, drain connected to uh, VDD. So the effective resistance seen from the source side is 1 over Gm. So provided the value of lambda is 0. So we shall see uh, some more examples and try to understand. So what is the impedance seen from a different uh, terminals. Now we shall see now again the same MOSFET. Now in this case we are looking from the drain. So the source is grounded, the gate is provided with some bias voltage. If I look from the drain, what is the uh, resistance that is seen? So here also we are assuming lambda to be 0. The equivalent circuit of this would be, you can see now gate is grounded. Since I am seeing from the drain, so there is a dummy source uh, connected to the drain. So now this is replaced by, uh, this is the equivalent of the MOSFET. You can see now this is VGS. So this, the current source is GM into VGS. Now let us uh, find out what is the expression for IX. So as we know that uh, since uh, gate is grounded and source is also grounded, VGS is actually 0. So this is VGS 0. When VGS is 0, GM into VGS is also 0. The magnitude of the current is 0. So that is represented by an open circuit here. So when it is open circuit, Ix is actually 0. So what is Vx by Ix? Vx by Ix is actually infinity. Meaning, uh, for a MOSFET with its source grounded, if you are looking from the drain with uh, a bias voltage applied to the gate, so we are going to actually see an infinite resistance. So when lambda is equal to 0. Same, similarly, for a P MOSFET, if you can look from the source, uh, with uh, gate provided with a DC bias and uh, a drain grounded. If you see from the source, it is 1 over GM. If you see from the drain, it is infinity. In both the cases, we are assuming that lambda is equal to 0. Meaning, if lambda is equal to 0, if you see from the drain, the resistance is infinite, either it is N MOSFET or P MOSFET. If you see from the source, it is 1 over GM. Again, it is whether it is N MOS or P MOS. We shall see. How does this MOSFET impedance changes if the value of lambda is non-zero? Now we are continuing the same process, same analysis with lambda equal to non-zero. So we are again repeating the same thing. So this is looking from the source side for an NMOS transistor with the gate with the uh, uh, gate bias voltage and drain is connected to VDD. Now I am replacing, of course, gate is grounded, uh, drain is grounded, and we are applying it. Uh, a dummy source uh, voltage source Vx. You can see now this MOSFET is replaced by uh, Gm into Vgs and an R0. So this R0 is there because lambda is a non-zero quantity. Now let us try to find what is the Ix expression. So Ix is given by uh, by writing the KCL at this point. Ix is nothing but I1 plus I2 where I1 is the current that is uh, going over here which is exactly minus of Gm into Vgs. If you look at uh, I2 so if you look at I2 now you can see this is a plus of Vx, this is grounded which is same as this ground. So it's actually Vx by R0. So it is Vx by R0 is the value of I2. So upon solving this, we get the expression for Ix as Gm plus 1 over R0 into Vx. So which can be written as, so Vx by Ix which happens to be the uh, resistance seen from the uh, source side for a, a MOSFET with this configuration. It comes out to be 1 over Gm plus 1 over R0 which is actually uh, 1 over Gm in parallel with R0. So the resistance seen from a source with this lambda non-zero and the gate applied with the DC bias and this VDD connected to the drain. So actually the resistance is 1 over Gm in parallel with R0. The only difference is when lambda is 0, this was only 1 over Gm. Now it is 1 over Gm in parallel with R0. So that's what we are seeing here. So with lambda non-zero, if you see from the source for a NMOS transistor, it is not 1 over GM, it is 1 over GM parallel with R0. So we shall continue the same uh, for a non-zero, for a lambda non-zero. If you look from the drain, how it looks. 
what is the actual impedance if you look from the drain again with the same analysis so gate is grounded source is also grounded since it you are, since you are looking from the drain side so there is a dummy source vx applied here so we are trying to find what is ix so as you can see now uh, since gate and source both are grounded vgs is zero so as this vgs is zero this current source happens to be an open circuit so this is represented by open circuit so then what is uh, the ix current the ix is actually is equal to vx by ix is r not or ix is given by vx by r not so that means to say if you look from the drain side for a mosfet with its lambda non zero the resistance is r not you may uh, you may remember that uh, when the mosfet if you are looking from the drain side if lambda is zero this was infinity now it is not infinity is only r not so similarly uh, we will we will prove it for PMOS also for PMOS if you look from the source it is 1 over gm in parallel with r naught when lambda is non zero similarly if you look if you look from the drain it is uh, r naught now the summary is that if you look from uh, the drain if lambda is zero uh, for uh, nmos transistors is infinity which is true for pmos also you can see you are looking from the drain it's infinity if you look from the source with lambda is equal to zero for either uh, n mass or p mass it is 1 over gm you can see now it is 1 over gm here here also it is 1 over gm for a lambda non zero if you look from the drain it is r naught same is true for a p mass transistor if you look from the drain it is r naught now we will see a n mass transistor if you are looking from the source this is a source terminal if you look from the source it is 1 over gm in parallel with r naught because lambda is non zero same is true for a P MOSFET. If you are looking down from the source side with lambda non-zero, it is one over gm in parallel with R naught. So, and there is one special case. Uh, this is uh, usually said as a diode connected thing, diode connected MOSFET. You can see now the gate is connected to drain. In such case, if you are looking from the drain side, if you are looking from the drain side, now you are putting a drain here. So since gate and uh, uh, drain are shorted, this is a short. Now the expression for Vx by Ix that is if you are looking from the drain side with this gate shorted with drain this happens to be 1 over gm for lambda equal to 0. For a lambda non-zero the same uh, impedance looking from the drain side with the drain and gate shorted it happens to be 1 over gm in parallel with R0. If this gate is not shorted it is infinity and R0. If uh, gate and drain are shorted it is uh, uh, it is 1 over gm or 1 over gm in parallel with r naught so this is for lambda non zero this is for lambda zero now we shall see uh, we shall see these type of uh, connections uh, used as a load in a cs amplifier now we can see this is a cs amplifier we usually used to connect a resistance rd over here now rd is replaced by an active transistor now we can see this is a transistor uh, which is PMOS now you are looking from the drain side so we already seen that okay in, in all the cases we are considering the the MOSFET is having lambda non-zero so since this is a non-zero if you look from the drain for uh, PMOS or the NMOS it is R0 I'm replacing this by R0 so this is since it is M2 it is being represented as R0 2 so uh, I am writing the AC equivalent keeping this uh, as a transistor now you can see this is grounded this is grounded this uh, MOSFET M2 is being represented by R02 because you are looking from the drain from the drain it looks like R0 because it is second transistor we are writing it as R02 so now replacing the MOSFET by its small signal model now you can see uh, this small signal model of uh, this M1 is on the drain side it is GM1 into VGS1 uh, of course there is a R01 because of this transistor R02 is the actual load of this so if you actually find the gain of this one it is minus gm1 into R01 parallel R02 so this R01 and R02 are parallel now here now similarly we can just uh, have a look at now if this connection is there now you can see there are two nmos transistor now this vb is a bias voltage now you can see this is you are looking towards the source now if you are looking towards the source with lambda non zero it is 1 over gm in parallel with r naught so we are writing that you can see now this is r naught 1 in parallel with r naught 2 in parallel with 1 over gm 2 so that comes out to be 
uh, v naught is given by this expression. So assuming R naught two oh, far far greater than one no gm two and uh, R naught one far far greater than one no gm two. So we write v naught.